Hi. So we're in the third phase of, um, of treating Hashimoto's, and really this uh, presentation is just about how to optimize thyroid hormones. I'll go through it step by step, show you what happens when TSH is high, T4 is low, uh, a lot of different possibilities with four different hormones being tested. And I think you'll find this um, very interesting, very enlightening, how these tests are so important with understanding the reasons for low thyroid hormone symptoms and why four are needed rather than the typical two uh, tests which most physicians do. So now uh, you've entered into phase three, which is thyroid antibodies are still down and you've received your lab test results. And now I'm going to run through um, different scenarios and what to do about uh, some imbalances. So we're going to look at thyroid hormones, if, um, if there's enough or adequate production of thyroid hormones, and how well the body is converting the T4 to T3, and about how well the body is utilizing, able to utilize the activating thyroid hormone T3. So we're just going to do this graphically. I think it's the easiest way to understand uh, the results from these thyroid lab tests. We're going to look at TSH, T4, and both free T4 and free T3. So let's say, as an example, that your lab tests come back and your TSH is about 2, which is, means there's adequate or optimal amounts of stimulation to the thyroid gland. And let's say that T4, is, T4 production is low. So in this case, the thyroid is getting plenty of stimulation from TSH, but for some reason, the thyroid is not able to respond or to produce adequate amounts of its primary hormone, T4. And this is generally a lack of nutrients. Either the thyroid's not getting enough iodide or enough selenium or zinc or iron. This is the primary reason for the thyroid not responding well. It can also be because of the thyroid um, having been um, uh, damaged in some way from the uh, amount of inflammation. And also it might be um, useful to, if you have not included those mixed EFAs from biotics research, to improve the, um, the tone or the um, sort of the, the um, softness of the thyroid gland as well as other endocrine glands in the system. Let's say the scenario is that you have high TSH um, up above the optimal of 2, and your, still your levels of T4 are low. This is just um, another example of how the pituitary is responding to low levels of the T4 and increasing TSH, and also maybe because of the, um, its response to the extra iodide. Again, this might be uh, due to a lack of nutrients maybe scarring of the thyroid again. It may take some additional time. Maybe <clears throat> maybe that two weeks of being on the three milligram dose is just maybe not enough time. It may take more time for the thyroid to finally respond and start producing more thyroid hormones. And it may also be an indication that there has been enough damage that the person does need to stay on their on their prescription. Let's look at inadequate amounts of TSH. Instead of optimally being at two, it's only at one. And of course, if the thyroid is not getting optimal stimulation from TSH, then of course its production of T4 is also going to be compromised and low. And this may be still an insufficient amount of iodide. It may take another month of being on 3 milligrams. It may require going up to maybe 5 or 6 milligrams of the iodide and iodine. So back to this one, optimal levels of TSH. And we also have plenty of T4. The thyroid is really responding well um, and producing optimal amounts of T4. But we have low free T4. Um, this simply means that most of the T4 is bound and uh, free, uh, there's not enough, enough free T4. And this can be due to uh, estrogen and progesterone imbalance, elevated, elevating the thyroid binding globulin can also be to a poor liver metabolism and there needs to be some work uh, using supplements for improving liver function. Again, thyroid binding globulin uh, must check your, for low levels of progesterone. 
also to see if there might be high levels of estrogen and to check liver enzymes. The progesterone and estrogen are, are checked through saliva and the liver enzymes known as a hepatic panel is checked with blood. Back to normal TSH, normal T4, and we have plenty of free T4. The binding is minimal and we have adequate amounts of free T4 to form free T3, but those levels are low on your lab results. And this means simply that the um, conversion of T4 to T3 is compromised, that removal of one atom of iodine from the T4 uh, uh, to make the T3, three being the number of atoms of iodine on that hormone, uh, is, not, uh, is not being um, converted uh, adequately. And this is a conversion problem. And this is a, um, a lack of selenium, which at this point you probably have plenty of selenium, so that's probably not the reason for it. But it may be a problem with a lack of cortisol, cortisol being um, sort of a catalyst for the conversion of T4 to T3. Let's say we have adequate amounts of TSH and T4, plenty of free T4, and we have pretty good conversion of the into the free T3. but the person may still be having some symptoms of low thyroid hormones. It's a utilization. The body is not able to utilize the, th the T3. So we go back to the nucleus of the cell, back to the T3 receptor, which is where the T3 engages to initiate metabolism or the function of that cell. Again, the person may have a lack of vitamin D, which is an important component of that receptor. They may also be lacking in vitamin A, another secondary or um, another component of that receptor, T3 nuclear receptor. And they may also not have adequate amounts of cortisol to prime the receptor for T3 to actually engage and turn on the metabolism of that cell. So even though a person's lab tests for all those thyroid hormones can be perfectly fine. They can still suffer from symptoms of low thyroid hormones because of these uh, deficiencies. There's other issues as well that um, may need to be addressed if they have not uh, been done thus far. We talked about these. The gut ecology is so important. And the environmental toxins can also interrupt thyroid, optimal thyroid function and also chronic infections. That would primarily be another burden on the right side of that scale and also lead to a chronic um, adrenal deficiency uh, leading to low cortisol levels. So we've come to the end of the trail. Uh, this is the last video in this series. Um, I, I, I think you, you're impressed with how much information there is about Hashimoto's and how many um, questions have been answered by these videos. Um, just to let you know that we do um, provide consultations for those people who don't have access to a knowledgeable physician. Uh, it's on our website, um, Hope for Hashimoto's and Consultations. Uh, you also see a listing for um, the two books that I've written. One is on low thyroid hormone symptoms, seven causes, seven solutions, and also, also the, the latest book called Hope for Hashimoto's, which um, pretty much is the same uh, as these video series, but also um, covers it in somewhat more detail. Uh, we also provide uh, labs in, in the United States, except for New York, Rhode Island, and um, New Jersey. We write prescriptions for long-distance patients. I consult with patients all over the world. Uh, if you're watching this in another part of the globe, uh, we do long-distance through Skype. It's a very, very effective um, a way of doing a um, sort of in-person consultation. So all these supplements that, are, that I've mentioned and also that are in the book are also listed on our website, uh, and we ship uh, also most everywhere. And uh, prescriptions for clients, we use two pharmacies, one here in Utah, one in Arizona. Uh, and if you're a client of ours, then uh, we can write a prescription and they will ship also anywhere in the world. So 
I'm sure that there's some people in parts of the world who have not shipped to before, so in general that's, that's the, uh, basically what we offer. We try to be of great service. My daughter's here with me to give me a, a large helping hand. <clears throat> and it's been um, very enjoyable sharing this information with you. Um, as I mentioned before, I've been in practice for a little over 25 years. My specialty is thyroid, and uh, it's, I, I find it a shame that so many people are suffering from this condition without really any medical help to attend to them. And um, it's, uh, I think now you understand that there is so much that can be done, and if you can find a clinician to work with locally, that would probably be ideal. Um, uh, I would, a lot of times the, the specialists, the endocrinologists are not that open to some new ideas such as these. You might find a younger practitioner who is more open-minded, who wants to investigate more, a more holistic approach. I think the newer, younger physicians and some uh, older physicians as well, more experienced physicians, are realizing that the pharmaceutical prescription approach uh, is helpful in the beginning, but it doesn't really address the cause, nor, nor does it address the improvement of a person's um, vitality and health. So um, my best wishes to all of you. Thank you for watching, and please uh, contact us if you have any questions, and we'll do the best we can to be of service to you. Thank you.